and welcome to our first episode of Six Degrees of Associations in the year 2021, where we're all going to be consistently saying hindsight was 2020. I know, guys, try not to laugh at my humor. I'm just, we're all just trying to power through this. We're only on day 12. And as we all know, there's been a few things that have upset the apple cart already in 2021. But anyway, we're excited to be back here on safer territory of discussion. Um, and the first guest that we have this year is actually the Chief Marketing Officer for Feather, Abai Kurana. Welcome to Six Degrees of Associations. Thank you so, so much for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm always, you know, I'm always excited when I figure out how exactly to pronounce people's names. So that's why. You got it. Try to be very theatrical. Nailed it, Aaron. Nature. Yeah. 10, out, 10 <laughs> out of 10 on that one. There you exactly. go. And of course, we have my faithful sidekick here, Lucas McCann, the co-founder and owner of Advanza. So thank you for being here, Lucas. Always my pleasure, Aaron. Thank you. And I'm really looking forward to this. I've learned a lot about Feather recently, and I think our audience is going to be excited to learn a little bit too. And we'll tease them out there, and then they can go find out some more information for themselves. Truly. Uh, so, you know, we did a lot of talking and prep work for this. And one of the things, um, Abai, that we've been talking about is... A lot of our sessions have really been focused, of course, in 2020 on the big pivot from events, right? This seems to be a real um, strategy that everyone was looking at in 2020. And a lot of it even centered around, okay, if our cornerstone event's not going to happen, or if we're taking it virtual, what else in our organization or association can we rely on for non-dues revenue? And I think what's unique about Feather is that you all come in there, um, if, I, if I can surmise, as the underpinning, as the platform, as the place in which those types of pivot strategies can now come to life and be put out into the world and be communicated appropriately with all of your members and audiences that are necessary. And I would just love yeah. to learn how you um, approached 2020 once things started to go downhill and assisted clients and what you saw um, with how digital marketing, and, and maybe I should just give everyone a, a brief scenario of what Feather does, um, but how yeah. digital marketing really supported a lot of those pivots. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just to kind of get to a little bit of what we do and what, what we kind of where we sit with our with our customers in terms of their organizational setup. Basically, Feather is a marketing and communications layer that our customers rely on. And so in regardless of what an association, because we work with like 800 associations at this point, regardless of what any association is prioritizing at a given point in time, and obviously that shifted a lot in 2020, whether that's live events or virtual events or a membership drive or a continuing education program or advocacy or driving donations for a foundation or whatever, whatever you care about as an association, you need an effective way to communicate with your audience about those things that you care, care about. And that's where we sit. We're like a, like a full fledged digital marketing, digital communications software tool that our associations rely on to get the word out about whatever it is that they want to get the word out about uh, in an effective, affordable, easy, kind of all-in-one place. Um, and so obviously that shifted around a lot in 2020 and kind of our approach strategically was like, oh man, like if we're in like weekly communication with our customers, we need to be in like twice weekly or thrice weekly communication with our customers, mm -hmm. especially around like March, April, May, June, the first handful of months where people are still figuring things out all of the kind of assumptions about what our customers wanted from us and what they cared about and what their priorities were kind of went out the window because live events, which are typically priority number one on most associations priority list, obviously went on hold. And so um, we took nothing for granted. Our customer success team, which is kind of like our account management team at Feather, started getting on calls with all of our customers very frequently to understand what it was that they were now shifting their attention to and how Feather can help support them in getting the word out, whether that was you know, a repurposed live event that became a virtual event or a new content series that they launched or a new membership drive that they started to prioritize in absence of live events, whatever it is that people shifted their focus to, our job was just to help them best get the word out about that thing using our technology and in our, in our services. 
Yeah, there was a lot of, at least for us at Advanza as well, March, April, May, strategy, strategy, strategy. And then in June, we started making the shift to tactical implementation of all of those. And a lot of it was around relevance and how can we stand up as an association and be a resource outside of maybe some of our traditional sponsorship stuff, um, but really a source for information and how can we help? I, I assume you all are in the same space. Yeah, totally. We, we saw our associations um, basically take some combination of two approaches. One was we lost our live event. We lost X percentage of our revenue. How do we recoup as much of that as possible? And that was more of like a short-term focus. Like, can we launch again, like a vir typically virtual event was, was the main thing. Like we can get 15%, 20%, 30% of the revenue, but at least we can recoup something. And then the kind of other half of the approach or the other type of approach that associations took was, well, our industry is hurting right now. Um, maybe trying to recoup revenue on a short-term basis isn't the right long-term strategy for us as an association. Maybe the right thing to do is to become an even more trusted partner for our audience, whether that's our members or our sponsors or other kinds of partners, such that when the world does turn around, we're the natural choice for doing more with or spending even more with or um, kind of working with even more closely. And some associations did some of both. Some associations went all like, we're not trying to recoup any revenue. We can, we can wait it out. You know, some associations had the good fortune of being in that position. And so we're just going to deliver a lot of value, deliver a lot of value, deliver a lot of value and, and trust that when the world turns around, we'll, you know, kind of reap the benefits of that basically. Yeah, I think we've already sort of looked back at this period for me and thought there's a silver lining there where associations historically, it's been a push, right? They've been pushing information down through social rather than trying to create content that sort of is a pull mechanism, if you can sort of play with that. And if you pull enough people in, you can then push some things back that will create the revenue that they were always looking for. But it was never a, not in all cases, but a lot of cases in the association world is let's use digital, let's use social to just sort of push content at people relevant or not. And this sort of forced them to understand the long game is really providing the rich content that actually creates more value and then you can leverage. Totally. We, we saw that time and time again and even took some of that approach ourselves. You know, um, I remember in, yeah, late March or early April, we decided to launch this mini series that we called The Response. And what it was, was interviews with association executives from large, medium, small associations in all kinds of industries, just asking them how they were responding to the situation. And none of the episodes, and I loved this because it was like, you remove the veil that is sometimes there in marketing content of like, this is the definitive guide to X, Y, Z. And like, just that, that's, everybody's going to call BS on that if that's how you're talking about responding to COVID because nobody knows what the definitive course of action to take is. And so it was really refreshing conversations this is what we're trying. We launched this COVID resources center because we had, you know, a lot of questions from our members about how to respond as a, you know, beauty supplier in during COVID or as a manufacturing, you know, equipment manufacturer or something like that. And so our associations would sometimes launch these kind of central COVID resource por portals and there's no revenue from that. That's simply providing value to your audience. Um, Anyways, all that to say that that was kind of our approach at the beginning of the pandemic too, is like, okay, just make conversations happen that are gonna be helpful um, instead of focusing kind of on short-term metrics, you know? Yeah, and maybe a little bit vulnerable too, to your point. Like maybe we don't know exactly what's going on, but here's, here's our thoughts and here's what others in the industry are saying and we'll be the, the center resource for that. Exactly. I'm curious because, um, you know, because of the background in digital marketing, and I know that a lot of what you do is uh, as, as the platform and surface sort of to get all of these messages out. But how did you see people, um, maybe even to, to Lucas's point, pushing, how did mm. you see the most creative people and, and within using your platform pivot to that pulling? So what kind mm. of strategies did you see or would you suggest that, because not everyone has massive teams that can do that. And some, some associations, frankly, might still be working on that. Yeah, I mean, this, this is not a, this, this is maybe not a shameless plug, but like Feather is trying to make that as simple as possible for associations to centralize 
all of your digital marketing and digital communication channels in one place, make it easy for a team of one to manage because we have a lot of customers who are literally a team of one or maybe even a team of 0.5 because that person is also doing some other things as well as handling comms or marketing. Um, so we're trying to make that as easy as possible for people to get the word out on all of the key digital channels. Um, to your point though, about kind of using digital marketing uh, to, to uh, kind of enhance the new strategic direction for associations or the modified strategic uh, direction for associations. The, the one kind of overall like principle tip that, I, that I'd give which gets, which gets to a fundamental is to really understand your audience and then understand how to segment your audience and therefore segment your communications so that they are as relevant as possible. You hear a lot about this in terms of like real-time personalization, like somebody hits your site, they see a different header image and different headline based upon their data. And I'm eh, kind of mad on that, but I do think that there's this in-between layer that is like between just send an email to everybody about everything, anytime you need to communicate anything, <laughs> which is sometimes the strategy and is not very effective. There's that side of the spectrum to like uber personalized everything, database magic. And I think that's also not necessarily the target. I think there is this in between of like understand the main five, six, seven buckets of your audience, whether that's, you know, existing members versus prospective members versus first time site visitors versus uh, like multi-time site visitors, like a more, enga a more engaged segment of your audience. Or maybe that's first year members versus three plus year members or sponsors, whatever. You can figure that out, whatever your main kind of lineup of key audiences is. And then to segment your communication to those, again, five buckets. It's not uber personalized to everybody in your 100,000 person audience. It's also not send a blast to everybody every time. But that has that is kind of a, um, a very proven approach that is, is super relevant in this time uh, as well. Are there are there elements of that approach combined with maybe what we've gone through in the past 12 months? And I, I know that Feather was doing digital um, sponsorships and advertising far before COVID and, and has proven through it as a platform, uh, given your 800 plus associations and everything else that you all accomplished. Um, but given that sort of philosophy, where do you take the platform from here and where does it, you know, where does it guide you? Yeah, kind of our, our software development product strategy is, is to be that all-in-one Marcoms platform um, for people like uh, association marketers. It's, it's basically people who, marketers who don't care about being on the bleeding edge of marketing technology and like keeping up with all the latest trends and like understanding Google's search algorithm updates. And it's like, a lot of that is, is frankly, there's a lot of marketers who just don't care about that kind of stuff. And they, they just wanna communicate with their audience in effective, proven ways and have it be simple and be affordable and easy to manage and not like take up their entire day to get the message out again to five or seven key audiences about the programs that, that they're interested in communicating. And what we're trying to build towards is truly being an all-in-one platform for that. So your digital advertising, which we already support, your kind of partner-based communication, whether you have you know, influencers or sponsors or partners who also help to get the word out about your association or about your programs. We have solutions for that. But there's other key digital channels, you know, like email. We think there's something interesting around direct mail too. Instead of having it be so in bulk, have it be more behavioral. Somebody comes to your site, starts to register for your event and then drops off and they get a postcard in the email 48 hours later with a reminder to finish their registration for your virtual event or something like that. We think that's a really interesting area. Mm -hmm. um, SMS and text messaging is, is starting to grow as a marketing channel as well, which has to be managed properly, of course, but that's another interesting communications channel. Yeah. So that's what we're building towards is truly being an all-in-one Marcoms platform. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the vision for us is, is rounding it out there. Very cool. I think that's great. You know, and again, um, being a marketer myself, I love it when 
Uh, I wouldn't say that this is a step back, right? But there is um, there is a trend in marketing, to your point, that has just gotten to the bleeding edge of everything, data, data, data. And um, often, some, sometimes people can really lose themselves in that. In the effort to prove out the, the cost of it, you're looking for, for what we like to all term as vanity metrics or things that may not actually be the return. And mm -hmm. I think it's great that you're trying to help organizations Let's focus on what's working, let's be engaging, and let's make sure that you have a platform that makes that manageable for you. Um, because you know, not everyone is a Procter & Gamble trying to sell $100 million worth of soap, right? And, and it's, <laughs> right. it's just a, it's an interesting space. I think the marketing plate, you know, the, the entire marketing industry is in right now is, is where if you always compare yourself to a, a consumer product good that's trying to you know, move 200 million of one single item in a year, it can be really daunting and overwhelming for anyone <laughs> trying to create that. So it really sounds like Feather comes in and provides that. Um, yeah. We love to leave people with a little bit to want to go explore. So we're gonna sure. we're gonna end our conversation, wrap up our conversation here, so we make sure that people out there listening to this um, come find you. Feather just by everyone, you know, it's F E A T H R. There's no right. E. Right. co there's no m so there's no e and no m so yes there's, uh, there's stories on both of those items um yes. maybe, can, maybe another time yeah exactly <laughs> reach out to you to learn the story exactly. but there are a ton of great resources on there I, I encourage our folks to check it out absolutely and of course we always end our conversations with uh six degrees of associations needing to know who would you mm -hmm. think, uh, Abai, that we should be talking to in the industry to you know, help our audiences learn more about the successes that have been seen in the association market over the last year or so? There's so many people come to mind. I've been in touch with so many uh, customers of ours who have really innovated truly during this time to deliver value to their members, to their audiences, to their partners and sponsors. Um, so there's, there's a long list. One person that's coming to mind specifically right now is Nicole Cardillo, who's a VP of marketing and events at Cosmetic Executive Women. Uh, it's cool. an association in the beauty industry. And they've done so much cool stuff in terms of, again, innovating to still deliver value to all of their key audiences during this time. We yeah. talked in May already at that time, they had done so much. I'm sure it's it's only continued since, since then. So I'd I recommend Nicole. I, I love it. It's our right. first recommendation to an association executive. And I do think that that is uh, certainly super helpful for people to hear a real live case study, if you will, from mm -hmm. someone who's done it. Great. Looking forward to it. Great. Well, thank you both so much for having me on. I, I loved it and I'd be happy to, to connect again in the future. Thank you. Bye. I appreciate it. All right, everyone. We'll see you in two weeks back here for Six Degrees of Associations. Thanks so much. <laughs>